Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We want to say not just welcome, but welcome home <laughs> to our alumni. time together and down memory lane and catch up on what's new with you and what's new with us. And that's part of the reason we gave you this folder. You can see some of the things that we are up to and things that God is doing here at Oklahoma Academy. And um, we also would like for you, we have a registration form. Call it online, maybe. Um, you could take your phone over there to that picture in the back and pull up the thing on your phone. And um, is it really, Jeremy, 21 years since you were a freshman? I'm not 21 years older. How did you get 21 years older? I mean, <laughs> that just that blew my mind. I remember. I remember Jeremy was a freshman in bell choir, and uh, I appreciated the energetic song service. And uh, Jeremy always had a lot of energy, and he would stand behind the bell table. I don't know if anybody was here then that <laughs> remembers that, but um, he was a lot of fun to have in bell choir. Um, so, anyway. Um, lots of things to remember, and if you look on the windowsills, you'll see all or most of our yearbooks. You're welcome to um, look through them. Uh, and we just ask that when you're done looking, you just put them back so they don't walk off. Um, if perchance you happen to lose yours and you really do want another one, you're w we, can, we probably could accommodate that. Um, I think we do have a few extras tucked around here or there somewhere. Um, so I would, if you would, just open that folder that you have and look at your weekend map. I'm not going to read it to you because I'm assuming that you graduated from Oklahoma Academy. You probably know how to read. <laughs> um, but I am going to highlight a few things uh, that are on, uh, on the schedule um, and something that's not on the schedule. So you can look at breakfast and Sabbath school and church and all the times and everything. And then after, in the afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, we have a couple of special times. Those of you that were bell ringers uh, can come and just have a lot of fun making noise with the bells. If you forgot how to ring, that's okay. You can come anyway. Um, for my bell ringers this year, if the juniors and the seniors want to come, and if there is space for you, we'll include you. If not, then um, you can listen to our beautiful music. Um, then after that, the choir and the chorale um, will spend some time. There's also a hike, so if, if you don't want to spend time singing, you can, you can uh, hike uh, with the group. Um, then there's the alumni supper. But during af the afternoon, uh, we also will have um, over at Messiah's Mansion their museum open. Mr. Lining Weber, I think, will be there, and um, you can take advantage of going over there and seeing what they have going and just a little glimpse of what they're planning uh, for the future and that they have at Messiah's Mansion now. It's a really neat um, thing, and I think you'll really enjoy that. So that's the part that's not there. Then uh, at 6 o'clock we will be having the alumni supper. Um, it will be in the gym rather than at OA Publishing, but if you just get over there you'll figure out where we are. Um, and then uh, t Sunday morning we hope that you will come and get some exercise with us, something that we do to try to do something together with the alumni. That is our 5K run. Uh, we'll be uh, registering at 7.30 and um, 
running at 8, and then breakfast will be in the cafeteria at 9.30. Um, so any anything else that I might be missing for the weekend? Any questions? Anybody needs anything? See us afterwards. We, we're just happy to have uh, everyone here. And uh, this evening, as you know, um, Jeremy had our song service from the class of 2002, Mrs. Shirley uh, played the piano, she came from the class of 1991, um, and I'm giving the announcements. Um, Michael Shirley, um, I didn't graduate from here, but I'm the class of 81 in case anybody wanted to know. Um, <laughs> um, so Michael Shirley, class of 18, we will have our scripture and prayer. Jerome, uh, class of 13, will have uh, special music and band. Are we having a duet or what's it'll be? It'll be you. That's great. We're glad for that. Um, Corey will be giving us uh, another special music from the class of 2014. It says on here that Emily will be our speaker. She will really be our moderator tonight. We do have several videos that we'll be showing um, from various alumni who couldn't make it. Um, and so she will be moderating that and introducing it. She's from the class of 07. And we're just thankful to have everybody here. And I'm going to give the mic over to Michael so that he can have our scripture and prayer. Sabbath. Our scripture tonight is found in Matthew 28, verse 16. Matthew 28, verse 16. When you're there, say amen. I imagine many of you don't actually need to go there. It's a common, commonly known verse says, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. Let's go down a little further. Let's go to 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Let's kneel for prayer. Father, thank you for this, this day and this time that we can come and worship you. Lord, thank you for that commission that you've given us, and help us to each consider how we can better uh, fulfill that mission. Thank you for this time where we are able to come together in many places and reminisce on good times. Lord, may this all be done to your glory, and thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Hello, can you hear me now? Ooh, I can hear myself. Okay. <laughs> um, so the song that I'm going to sing is a song that I'm actually going to dedicate to Miss Thea Henderson. Um, she's here a few times over the years. Um, because, unfortunately, she this is her last year at Oklahoma Chapel. And so I am personally affected a lot by this dear lady that is just here. Because she will always be someone that I hold dear to my heart. She was part of the reason for how I, I learned piano to accompany her the prior two years. I came in as a freshman in 2009. Um, I had not played piano before ever. <laughs> but I was influenced from the song called Christmas Day Glory. I don't know if any of some of probably my grade eight know that song. But I was just like, dang, that's really, really cool how that song is. That's like really cool. And my thing was always like, you should 
definitely like you know to work on it. You know, you can play, you can do it. And and that was the year I was also a little upset because he didn't put me in Corral, or and I didn't get in Belfort either. <laughs> my freshman year, it's okay, I got in my sophomore year. But um, so I was motivated, you know. So um, yeah, so I was like, you know, I'm still I'm gonna do this. And so I practiced, I practiced a lot. Um, and thankfully, um, Coach Leo Henderson, who was a wonderful piano instructor back home, and um, that um, was wonderful, gave me encouragement. And yeah, so by my junior year, I had joined the accompaniment choir and um, for the for the choir in Corral. Um, and I also took a conducting symposium um, that Coach Leo Henderson, uh, Coach Leo Henderson, I guess, yes, um, put on. And because of that, I was able to conduct the Handbell Choir and the Choir of Music. So it was. It's been a journey, and she has had such an influence on my musical life, um, in regards to sacred music, and um, I also have a history with Islam <laughs> as well. But um, we won't talk today about that. But um, I just, I don't know. It's been amazing, and since I graduated in 2014, I will never forget the songs that I've done. I always think about the end in Haven, and um, I don't know. It's just always like a safe haven every time I come back. I only missed one year last year, alumni weekend. I've been to all of my other alumni weekends since then um, because every time I come back, <laughs> it reminds me of just how amazing my life was. And I feel like the world, <laughs> world, that's all I'm going to say about the world. <laughs> when I come back here, I don't think about it. I think about God, and I think about the amazing times I had at campouts, um, singing with the chorale, Mr. Collins' amazing instruction with the bell choir, and those ama amazing conundrums I should go through. <laughs> um, I don't know, just so many memories, and I'm so grateful and blessed to be here. The song that I'm going to sing is Faith Within Your Arms by Kelly Clarkson. Whether I'm strong, or whether I'm sure, or maybe perfect, feeling the love for giving you, I know a place where I can go.
It's not going to be as good, but hopefully you still have it. This guy just stuck with me. This is a song I wrote this year called Come Hold My Hand, Dear Lord. Hope you like it. Come hold my hand, dear Lord, before I lose my way. I need your hand to hold. So that I do not stray the road I'm traveling down has troubles all around. Please come and hold my hand and keep me. Keep me on the way. Come wash away my sins so I can be like you. I need your cleansing blood to give. Mistakes I've made today, please wash them all away. Please come and hold my hand and keep me on the way. I do not see. And keep me on the way. Come hold my hand, dear Lord, and keep me on the way.
purpose leads to a mission of your own. Let the help come as she will. Amen. My name is Emily, like Emily Fisher, my name is Emily Kirk. Um, my precious family just went to their bedtime routine, um, so we'll get to meet them tomorrow some more. Um, I didn't come from very far away. I live in Gentry, Arkansas currently, so it's about three hours away, and it's good to be close enough to come back just about every year for Alumni Weekend, and it's such a blessing, and it's an honor to be up here this evening. Um, before, the, before we watch our videos this evening, which will be focusing on missionaries that graduated from Oklahoma Academy, I wanted to share a tiny bit about myself. Um, graduated in 2007, and I think that's 12 years ago. It's kind of scary being in the double digits. I was at one point back where you were sitting, and I, I don't know, I must have been married and I had kids. That seems so far away, but it happens. It Time flies by, and it's so good to be back. Um, I was trained as a nurse, but I am very happily working as a mom. And since our focus may focus is mission work tonight, let me tell you, that has stretched me more than any mission trip I've been on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's a bunch of character refinement, and I highly recommend the weekend. It's a wonderful blessing in my life, and that is currently what I am doing. Um, after I graduated from Oklahoma Academy, um, went on to, well, let me back up for a second. When I was at Oklahoma Academy, I was so thankful for the exposure and the experiences in mission work that we had. I came from my last two years of high school, so my junior year, um, we were doing a trip to Bolivia, and the choir and the crowd and the bell choir went, and that was a hard trip. It was great. Um, we did recording in Spanish. Does, does it look like I speak Spanish? No, I don't. But we sang. We recorded these songs in Spanish, and it was a huge blessing. And then the next year, uh, for our senior class trip, we went to Honduras, and that was incredible as well. It was a pretty standard short mission trip. We did evangelistic meetings and um, BBS, and we had some construction projects. It was perfect. So it put in my heart a very strong desire to keep doing that sort of thing. Um, after I graduated that summer, went to Kenya and then Nicaragua and then Peru. I, I, I couldn't stop. Um, let's see, after Korea, um, worked for a few years as a nurse and then went to Ireland as a short-term missionary and then came back and got married and started the mission of motherhood. So that's, that's who I am, and you're going to learn about some other missionaries this evening. All right. You're going to learn about some other missionaries this evening. Um, Elizabeth Wiles, who graduated in 1999, she'll be the first one that we will meet tonight. I haven't met some of these missionaries, so it'll be exciting to learn along right with you. And throughout these videos, you'll probably get the idea, although I have not watched them myself, missionaries are very human. They very much depend upon God. You know that because you're a missionary too. But I don't want us to put them on a pedestal. We're so glad that they're doing what they're doing. But all the honor and glory goes to God that they are willing to be used by him and to go through extra trials and to yeah, do what God wants them to do. And you just never know what, what God has for them to do. Let us pray. 
Okay, but I'm not saying anything. Well, okay. Okay, you're ready? Okay. All right. I'll start with Elizabeth Wiles Jesse. Here she is. Hello to all my OA friends and family. My name is Elizabeth Fressy, AKA Elizabeth Wiles, uh, class of 99. And I was contacted asking if I could update you all on missions in my life since leaving OA. Uh, missions has uh, been a very significant part of my life. Um, I'm very passionate about missions, mission work, going uh, and serving um, in many capacities that God calls us to. Um, my interest in missions specifically started um, at OA, actually. Uh, my senior class trip was to the Marshall Islands, and while I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to study in college, I became totally sure over those 10 days that I loved mission work. And so I actually went the next year as a student missionary, along with the Vignerons, had a great year on the island of Yap, and I taught second grade that year. And while I loved it, um, I wasn't sure if I was cut out to be a teacher, um, but I had another significant event that year, which was one of the other student missionaries. Um, was very interesting to me, and uh, we came back, got to know each other, and eventually got married. Um, and then we went back to Palau, which is another island in Micronesia. Um, we went back to Palau, and he taught in uh, the high school, and I got fourth grade that year. And that was the year that I fell in love with teaching, um, decided that I could definitely be a teacher. And that is what we, uh, when we went to Andrews from there, um, I got my degree in elementary education. Uh, from there, he, he was actually became a pastor and we went to Canada. Um, so I got to experience another culture in Canada. Um, but while there, he was the youth leader of our church. And so we went on two short-term mission trips there, uh, one to Puerto Rico and one to the Dominican Republic. Um, because I wanted to, and he wanted to, give those kids a taste of mission work, of overseas life, of, of a life that's a little bit different than the life they've been living. Um, because it is that taste, that experience of something else, and being able to uh, take part in that, be helpful to others, um, it just broadens your horizons and expands your worldview. And I think that's very important. Um, from Canada, we went to Louisiana, which was like entering another mission field. Um, it's very um, Catholic and very traditional in its own way, the Cajun country. And so um, I got to experience another culture there, even though I was in the United States. Um, and, you know, I have to say that because of my mission experiences, it has helped me even when I'm not serving in an official mission um, overseas or otherwise. Um, as a pastor's wife, I have been able to minister and, and have a little mission field um, in every church that we've been in. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys, don't think that you have to be a missionary or a pastor's wife to be able to make a difference. Um, one of the biggest things that I've seen in my own life that makes a difference in people's lives is when they have something on their heart and they share it with you. Um, you know, their, their parent just was in a, in a situation, uh, maybe they're in the hospital or, or diagnosed with something. Um, maybe they're just having a hard time. Um, and they ask you to pray for them. Don't just say yes, but say, absolutely, can I pray with you right now? And I know that feels awkward at first, but do it. And I, I know that a lot of you probably already do that coming from OA. Um, but go ahead and try it if you haven't. Just pray with them right there. Step into a corner if you feel like you need to. But go ahead and actually let them hear you pray for them. It's so impactful for so many people. Um, that's actually one of the... I love being a pastor's wife because it kind of gives me a little bit of an in. But you don't have to wait for that official title. Go ahead and do it. Um, while we were in Louisiana, we uh, embarked on another mission. Um, and that was to become foster parents. And that was quite an amazing adventure. Um, we did that for two years and got uh, thoroughly connected with one particular family. And we've stayed in touch with them ever since. And it's just been so rewarding to see um, the difference that their lives are now compared to what it would have been. Um, it's just 
it's been amazing. And we just, we continue to keep in touch with them and uh, are blessed by the way that they have continued to grow and uh, stay in school and all those wonderful things that we hope for our kids. Um, you know, you don't have to become a foster parent either to make a big difference in somebody's life. We had some amazing uh, CASA uh, workers, which are just people that volunteer to go help and basically listen to the kids and be their voice because unfortunately, so many of them don't get to have a voice. Um, the, there's respite workers that uh, they're like foster parents, except they just can't quite commit to it full time. So maybe weekends or, you know, just an overnight here and there. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's lots of different ways to help our own children in the United States that are in such need. Um, I became a teacher, obviously, like I said, I studied elementary education and, and became a teacher. And that in and of itself is another mission field. And so, you know, every day I get to interact with students. And let me tell you, the students here in the United States are no less needy than the students that were overseas. And they need Jesus just as much. And you know, I've always worked in Seventh-day Adventist schools as a full-time teacher. I did a lot of subbing in public schools. But as a full-time teacher, I've always been in Seventh-day Adventist schools. And even those children that come from Seventh-day Adventist homes, they need Jesus. And a lot of them don't haven't been introduced to him in a real and personal way. Um, and so teaching is an amazing mission field, whether you're doing it overseas or right here in the United States, whether it's in public school or in cr private school, Christian school, Adventist school, um, children, people, they need Jesus. Um, and so those are my, my major areas of impact. Um, I do have to say that becoming a parent has probably been the biggest mission field. Um, to just, you know, to just live that life out. It's, it's one thing if you can go home and close the doors and kind of take that breather, but you don't get that opportunity when you're a parent. Um, they're always there, they're always watching, and to just really try, and I fail miserably more often than I, I like, but to just try to every day lead my own children to Christ, to be that model, to be that example for them. Um, and, you know, we all have people in our lives that we see a lot, and just if we started thinking of each other as our mission field, um, stopped assuming that everybody else has it all together because they don't, it would really, I think, change the way that our churches and our society functions. Um, we all need Jesus and to just come alongside each other, offer that helping hand, um, it's powerful, it's powerful. So I encourage you to have at least one overseas major experience because that will open your eyes. Definitely go for it. Short-term mission trips, yes, great start, but try to do a year somewhere. Student missionary is a wonderful idea. Um, there's so many different organizations that offer those experiences. Um, I truly believe that my life has changed for the better and that I would not be the person that I am today if I had not had uh, those short and long-term overseas experiences. But don't think that you have to go overseas in order to minister. And you don't even have to go overseas at all. You don't have to have that long-term experience. Um, but being willing to let God use you wherever, here, there, everywhere, every day, all the time, you know that that is what um, changes lives. And that's what we're here for, to change lives. Thank you so much. And you guys enjoy the rest of Alumni Weekend. Hey, Oklahoma Academy. I'm over here in Zambia, Africa, on a year in student missions at Southern Adventist University. Um, so right now, I'm out here in the bush. We're on a trip out in the middle of nowhere to build one-day churches all across Zambia here in the eastern province. And as you can see behind me, we have a hut over here. And um, this village has a lot of huts in it. <laughs> and um, there's all sorts of buildings and interesting things. In fact, we just had to walk up the mountain behind the, the hut to find any kind of cell phone service. But unfortunately, we didn't find any. Go ahead and follow me this way. We'll go check out some other cool things. Here we have our vehicle that we uh, trekked out here all this way. Uh, thankfully, it's dry season. We didn't have to go through any muddy puddles or anything. But if you follow me this way, you'll see where some guys are loading the trailer with one of the one-day churches. Say hi, guys. Hi, Joshua. All right. Hi, Joshua. Come this way. You can see where all the different materials are that they're loading up 
for um, these one day churches and just like the name sounds it's churches that we put up in one day yeah, to people eight. for people that want to have a place to worship God together so um, you may be wondering why I came all the way out here to Africa to, to do this well just go ahead and come this way well, I, I really had a burden on my heart missions and as I went to Oklahoma Academy, and as I participated in things like Messiah's Mansion and the music program, it really gave me a desire to go out into the world and serve others. And it was especially on my senior class trip in 2014. We went to Ghana, Africa. I really saw um, the need of the people there and the fulfillment of the Bible verse where Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So, um, it doesn't matter where you are, you don't have to travel halfway across the world, but you can be a missionary wherever you are. So, I hope you guys enjoy this alumni weekend, and maybe I'll come back and share some more stories about my adventure. Bye. Greetings, my name is Kiana Costello, and I graduated from OA in 2017. And since then, um, a lot has happened. I uh, went to college in Weimar Institute. I'm currently a sophomore, but I decided to take um, one year off to be a student missionary serving right now um, in the country of Timor-Leste. Not many people know where that is, but it's um, a small little island between Indonesia and Australia. And, um, I'm working at the Timor Leste Adventist International School, um, where I am teaching second grade. And yes, second grade is definitely, you know, character building, but they're fun, they're cute, and we're having a great time. Um, mission work has always been in my life since I was young. And um, I'm glad for the opportunity I have had. I have been able to have this experience. And um, for, just for the blessing that um, even though I was at OA for just one year, um, one year, that one year was really a blessing for me. And I can see how the Lord has used my, um, the time that I spent at OA for um, the bettering of myself and, as, and my character as well as um, being able to um, bring me to this point in time here in Timor-Leste. Uh, it's exciting. You never know what's coming next, but, you know, with, with God, all things are possible. And please keep us in your prayers, as well as the school and the students. Um, we would greatly appreciate that. And continue to enjoy your time as you're visiting for Alumni Weekend at OA, and I wish you God's blessings. Have a good day. They say that everything comes to an end. What they fail to say is that the end of one thing is often the beginning of something new. My name is Providence and this is Mana. We're four year seniors here at Oklahoma Academy. It all started the year 2015 when we came to OA as freshmen. We left our families and friends behind and entered into a new experience. There were many things we didn't know, but the people here helped us through the entire year. Then came sophomore year. There were many talented musicians and Mana and I aspired to be like them. We wanted to gain similar talents. I remember we would wake up early in the morning just to practice, and with time, we progressed. Sadly, most of our class left after this year, and we figured out it would only be Mana and I staying for junior year. 
But then two amazing people came into our junior class, the resolved Steven and the quiet but funny Ellen. And although we were shy at first, we bonded through all the activities that transpired our junior year. But God turned everything around with four new seniors. Andy, the quiet leader, Magdalene, the serious yet dedicated one, Maria, the confident one, Nikki, the positive motivator. And we each got to know each other. But as a class, we had a lot to do. A lot of responsibilities, graduation prep, college prep, but mainly the Cuba trip preparations during this short period of time. Each year, the seniors use their class trip to serve in the mission field. This year, the entire school went to Cuba and held six simultaneous evangelistic series in different locations. The seniors were able to participate in many different roles. Some were the main speakers at the evangelistic meetings, others led out in the children's programs. All of them contributed to a successful campaign where many decisions for baptism occurred. The seniors also spent one week in Cuba after the rest of the school returned home. They were able to visit other parts of the island while also helping with the restoration project at the School of Light. When we went to Cuba, I was the adult meeting speaker. And in our meetings, we were going over the fundamentals of Adventism. And I was teaching about baptism one night. And after that night, we were, make, we were talking about baptism a lot. And like I was bringing it up in my calls and I was telling the people how important it is to be baptized. But I had a problem with this because I came to their country and was telling them what to do when I myself hadn't done that thing. I was not yet baptized. And because I had things in my life that kept me from coming to my Lord. But as I was preaching to them, I was really preaching to myself. And I realized that I didn't want anything to come between my Lord and my, myself. So that's why I made the decision to publicly declare that Jesus is Lord of my heart. So before I went to Cuba, I had a lot of little assignments to do for school and preparing for college. And so I had a lot on my mind and people would ask me, like, are you excited to go to Cuba? And even though I was, I wasn't as prepared as I could have been. I wasn't as focused and getting as excited as I could have. And I didn't get everything done, but I had to go anyway. And so I was worrying about that a little bit. Um, as I was going there. But then once I got there, I got really absorbed into the mission work, in the meetings, visiting people, playing with the kids. And they were really happy and that made me happy. And a couple days in, I had to stop and realize that I hadn't been worrying about all those things that I thought I would have. And all the other people in Cuba, they were happy. And as I, as I saw them, that made me realize that I don't have to stress out over all these little things of the earth. So one of the things we learned in Cuba is, is that if God provides a way, He'll never give up on you. The only thing we had to do for that to happen was pray diligently and place our faith in Him. <laughs> Boy, was I humbled. First night, it seemed as though no one was paying attention. Everyone was, asleep. most of the people were asleep. And that night, I had to just pray, ask God that He would do something through me. Not my will, but His will be done. Not that I could see anything. And I had to just go by faith, not by sight, hoping that God would not let me be the hindrance to the message, but through me, He might work wonders. So when we were gonna get ready to go to Cuba, I wasn't really ready. I, you know, I was scared of what could happen if something happened. And so Mrs. Henderson told us every time we would get ready, let's pray so that this problem that just happened so it can get solved. When I went to Cuba, I first noticed that the Christian there was so loving, kind, and energetic. And their love for God was so deep, and they were willing to give up their life for God. For my experience in Cuba, something that stuck out to me was the people's genuine love. They had a deep love for Christ and for others. And when I would do something where I thought I was being a great Christian or I thought I was showing real love for somebody, they would go beyond what I did 
and it would show me that I'm not even close. Like they had such a deep love, like their experience with God was so, for, with God was so deep that they had a deep love that matched that experience. And whether someone was a Christian, whether someone was a non-believer, whether they had been a Christian and then walked away from the church, whether they were a drug addict or they were living the lowest life or the highest life, no matter what, they did not have hate for anybody. And um, so for me, I was shown through their examples what real love is like. And I think it was because for them, when you're in Cuba and you become a Christian, you have to dedicate your life wholly to it and you can't go half in, half out. And they were all in and their love matched that. And I want to resemble the same love that they had. And I want to show people what real love is and what love is like in Cuba. And so I hope that my, I'll be able to shine like the Cubans did and reflect off of their examples. The senior class usually plays an important role in the school's success. They set the tone both spiritually and academically. They are the spoken and unspoken leaders, and their influence is seen and felt in all that happens. This year's senior class is no different. As a collective, the senior class was the compass for the spiritual direction the school took. They were the music to the soundtrack of the year. They were the example for others to emulate. All of them will be terribly missed.